assuming that you are not already familiar with the movie Mavens, um, we want to do our clubhouse segment to get to know them a little bit better. What's the password? New England clam chowder. Is that the red or the white? I can never remember that. White? Uh, benefits us in the podcast and you as the listener to get the to get to know them a little better know their tastes and maybe uh, understand their points of view as they uh, chime in here on the podcast today so i uh i'm just gonna start with mine um i always want to know what movie you would go back and revisit for the first time with fresh eyes with no experience with it we all love movies i assume we're all here on this podcast we're all listening to this podcast and I think my favorite thing about movies is the shared experience, whether it's something that was knowingly shared or just something that was funny that you saw in the theater, whatever it is that just adds to the whole experience. And I just want to know, what would you relive again for the first time? And Annie, let's start with you this time. Okay, well, I love this question. And my answer is Parasite. Mm, Bong Joon-ho's Parasite. Hell yeah. And like I want to so badly watch it again for the first time that I've seen it once in the theater and I have refused outright refused Carson multiple times to watch yeah. it for, for our podcast, because I am trying to forget more of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, the longer it goes, the more I'll almost catch that experience again. It's never quite the same as the first time. Sure. But one thing I love about, watching movies with a friend is that you can kind of like relive watching it for the first time. If you're like totally. showing someone that's never seen it before, because you're like watching it through their eyes and you guys, I can like put myself in a headspace of pretending I'm like watching it with somebody that's never seen it just to like, just to get new information. That's awesome. yeah. Cause I love that feeling so much. <laughs> I envy that. That's, that's <laughs> dangerous for me because I always get upset if I don't feel like they're appreciating it the right way. And I realize that that's a me sorry. thing. That's a personal problem. You know, I Remind should just watch a movie with Tyler again. <laughs> oh, don't say that. That breaks my heart. Um, but yeah, it is cool to like when, especially when you can tell someone's enjoying it. Like we'll talk about this a little bit later, but uh, my girlfriend isn't very much of a movie person. Um, she doesn't watch a lot of movies with me, but she watched the big Lebowski with me and it was fun to watch her actually like it and enjoy it oh, and, nice. uh, you know, be able to share that with her. So that was, that was pretty cool. It's another, another benefit to the old podcast here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Carson, where would you go here? Ooh. Okay. I thought really hard about this. Um, and I think I'm going to go with uncut gems, mm, um, nice. simply nice. because of how visceral that experience was mm -hmm. like i remember leaving that theater sweating oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> like totally. i was tense i was like clenched the whole time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just, i i i had the same experience with um whiplash but i watched whiplash mm -hmm. at home and so it felt different so yeah. but like being in the theater and like feeling the tension of everyone around me too like that was just like that's movies baby that's oh, movies yeah. <laughs> like, totally it was a great experience. And uh, we watched it for the podcast and it, yeah, just didn't hit the same. I mean, of course, like mm. it's an incredibly tense movie, but watching it yeah. at home years later just did not hit like that first time. I mean, I, it's amazing you guys picked those two. I've talked about this on the pod before, but there was this three week run in my life where I saw like Uncut Gems, Knives Out and Parasite because they all came out like within three weeks of each other. And I just remember being blown away. It's like, movies are back baby like, these are like, like every movie's great now this is yeah. awesome three weeks in a row like just some all-timers coming out so i think it's great that you guys picked like two of those three because that time frame was just mm -hmm. crazy um and annie like you said like i i feel like when i suggest a movie to someone especially if i'm there the whole time i'm just like are they laughing at the right spot <laughs> like i even did it with these guys we just recently um a couple rounds ago did like movies so bad they're scary we watched the room together Oh my and, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I think they're going to like it, but I don't know. Like maybe this is just like just bad, bad. And they're not going to enjoy <laughs> it. Like needless to say, I think we all had a good time. Oh, my favorite movie trope. How was work today? Empty cups. Obviously <laughs> empty cups. You got a new client and the bank will make a lot of money. What client? I cannot tell you. It's confidential. <laughs> oh, come on. Why not? No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Yeah. Just oh. best friends. <laughs> oh, just a couple of best friends. <laughs> Someone's gotta go. Yeah, Shooting the shit. What time? Golden Gate Park. Six oh my god. But I was the only one that had seen it before, so I was kind of sitting there like, are they laughing? Like, are they, are they <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely. Yeah, my, I almost had an aneurysm watching that movie. I was laughing <laughs> oh so hard. I had to like pause the movie. To, to tie I it, very to recently quoted the room to someone, and they and I and then I tried to like explain it, and it nice. was totally lost yeah. on them. And I was like, okay, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was, like, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, nothing. It's nothing. Um, what was what was the quote? Was it like, "Hi, doggy"? Or something? <laughs> no, it was just. Um, so how's your sex life? It was literally, oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. That's a classic. Yeah, yeah. that's a classic. Yeah. Oh, I, I got to shout out uh, a friend of the pod, Jake, uh, Jake Draper. He recently, he sent me a screenshot because he listened to our room episode and he had a screenshot of uh, customer support on some website helping him out. He's like, hey, Jake, this is Mark. And he just responded, oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. A little chat bubble. <laughs> Yeah, I know we were talking about possibly doing a rest more quotable movies, and that was going to be my answer there for Bix. I'm like, there's just so yeah. much you could pull from that movie. But I'm I'm going to go into my question. One thing I like to ask people uh, just to kind of get to know them better is essentially we're all familiar with the deserted island, you know, idea here. So if you're on a, a, a desert island, you have a TV and a Blu-ray player, and you get to take the filmography of one person with you, a director or an actor, that's what you're going to be watching the whole time you're on this island until you get saved. If they're still alive, we'll keep sending you their stuff. We're not going to send help, but we'll send you their movies. You know, <laughs> like we know where you are, but you're we're not going to help you. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of curious, like who, who you would pick um, and why. And Carson, I'm gonna, I'll throw it to you first. Ooh. Okay. I love this question. Um, I had never thought about of like an entire filmography. Obviously we've all thought about like what movies or, you know, what albums or whatever, but an entire filmography I had never thought of. I'm going to go with Reese Witherspoon. Ooh. She has such a varied that. career. Yeah. Okay. We've got Legally Blonde. Mm -hmm. We've got American Psycho. We've got Sweet Home Alabama, Inherent Vice, not to mention The Morning Show. She mm -hmm. was also on Friends. I'm going to get the entire collection of Friends. Keep going. That's very true. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. You Big thought this out. Lies. I appreciate it. Yeah. Right. Big Little Lies. Like, she has an incredible... Cruel Intentions. Like, mm -hmm. these are these are core movies, core TV shows for me. I'm going to go with Reese Witherspoon. That's kind of like a no-brainer, honestly, That's a great for pick. me. What is a yeah, it's amazing. No one, yeah, we've yet you to were hear the that. first Reese. You're the first yeah. Reese. Yeah. Nice. I will Hell say, yeah. I, was, I was waiting for you to shout out fear. You know, I, I was hoping oh, yeah. you get the fear. I thought you were start pounding your chest. Yeah. You know, and like, <laughs> start doing that on screen. But uh, yeah, that Pleasantville, Cruel Intentions, yes. man, so many good movies. That's a yeah, awesome choice. Collection. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Wonderful choice, Annie. It's a tough act to follow, but who? Who's <laughs> yeah. your desert island? I definitely like this question. Always stresses me out. So I like. <laughs> And how could you do this to any about it? <laughs> I yeah, strategically thought about it less <laughs> um, and just sort of picked. I also went with an actor because I thought they would have more movies than a director. Yeah. And I picked one of the first people that popped into my head. And that person was Brad Pitt. Mm. And Can't mostly because like yeah. also just the, the variety in his filmography mm -hmm. yeah. like, and the amount in his filmography that I really, really like, mm -hmm. like you got Inglourious Bastards, Ocean's Eleven, yep. even Benjamin Button is a favorite of mine. Interview with the Vampire. Thelma mm -hmm. Louise. Interview with the Vampire, yes. <laughs> There's so much. So, and I guess like he's also hot, so it's like. Entertaining it's in not a bummer. Two different ways. Just a little bonus. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Has, yeah. Has anyone picked Brad Pitt before? I think that's our first Brad Pitt too. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. They have. And honestly, like if you really just like extend it out to all the stuff he's produced as yeah, well. Yeah, I was just gonna say some more really great yeah. stuff. So mm -hmm. it's a solid choice. I like it. I'm surprised no one's ever said that before. I'm surprised I didn't say that. I love yeah. Brad Pitt. <laughs> you, Nobody's been brave choice. enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for breaking the barrier there. So <laughs> finally, someone will speak the truth. <laughs> we just want a hot man to look at. So yeah. Perfect. I love it. That's a great choice. Those are great picks. Uh, I'm going to ask you both to get a little bit more vulnerable with mine. And look, we've all got skeletons in our closet, things that we're not proud of, things we don't want people to know about. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have movies in our lives that we do want people to know about 
but that we feel are very underappreciated and that we feel that the majority and the masses just simply haven't seen or given these movies a chance. And here on the podcast, we've sort of coined the term unsung gem for those types of movies. And I just would love to hear what your guys' unsung gem is. And I'll throw it to Annie first. I got scared. I thought we were going to go into a guilty pleasure question. And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't prepare this. Um, that is a fun question. We might, we should work in some at some point. But yeah, I do like yeah. that one. We'll we're spare you that. today. <laughs> My unsung gem is uh, Hayao Miyazaki's Porco Rosso. Ooh. Hell yeah. I don't Love know it. if anyone's seen it, but everyone I'm likes to one. talk about Spirited Away and Hell's Moving Castle, two movies that I love. Mm-hmm. But Porco Rosso is one of his earlier films and I just really, really like it. Nice. I don't, I don't know Say why no I watched it again recently. <laughs> no, I thought it was, it was awesome. just like, it's just, it's just a good little picture. <laughs> I, I just saw it recently when it on HBO max um, mm-hmm. and I hadn't seen it before. I'd seen like all most, most of his other stuff. And yeah, that movie ruled. I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. That's a great pick. Yeah. It's funny. It's beautiful. It's charming anti-war what more mm-hmm. could you want exactly. you had me at miyazaki so <laughs> yeah yeah we did uh, yeah, definitely check, check it out. out we did miyazaki like a year ago we did Howl's moon castle and spirited away and then also princess mononoke which was oh yeah was another super, amazing one yeah it was fun to see mm-hmm. animate like violence like that that was, that was <laughs> yeah. yes but, but yeah Porco Rosso, music, i gotta check out for sure yeah awesome. definitely how about you carson Ooh, good pick annie uh i'm gonna go with Velvet Buzzsaw, anybody? Is that um, it, Jill and Hall, or who's in that? Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, it's uh, directed by Dan Gilroy, who wrote and directed Nightcrawler, also with okay. Jill and Hall, one of my favorite yeah. movies. Uh, it's got Tony Collette, John Malkovich, Jake Jill and Hall. It's a stacked cast. It's um, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Triangle of Sadness. Came out mm-hmm. a couple of months uh, yeah. ago. Highly recommend that movie. Um, but it's in, it's, uh, Velvet Buzzsaw is a satire in the same vein as, uh, uh, Triangle of Sadness. And it's about, um, kind of like the highbrow, uh, capital A art scene in Los Angeles. And, um, there's just like wheeling and dealing and schemes and Tony Collette being Tony Collette and Jake Gyllenhaal being bisexual, like a lot's happening. And, uh, yeah, I think this, I think like. A lot. Whenever it first came out, a lot of people didn't appreciate it or like it. But I recently revisited it, and I loved it. I awesome. was like, "Fuck, why don't people like this?" <laughs> yeah, check it out. Velvet Buzzsaw. It's on. It's a. It's actually a Netflix original, hmm. which is crazy for Daniel. Oh, really? right? hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that their follow up to um, Nightcrawler together? Yeah. So that. So. so they did Nightcrawler in 2014. Velvet Buzzsaw was 2019, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, Renee mm-hmm. Russo's back too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you so unknowingly Car- stumbled into oh wait, are you going? Are you going where I think you're going? Matt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, I'll let you take it from here. <laughs> well, Carson, you uh you used a trigger word here uh, sure? when you oh. referenced Bell Bitsaw, and that is Jill and Hall. Oh uh, we have we, we have should, a we segment. Make, like an, an alert that pops up or yeah. We uh we have a we have a segment that only pops up when Jill and Hall is mentioned. It's called the Jill and Hall of Fame. Okay. And essentially <laughs> look, we're all fans of Jake Jill and Hall. We we don't need to sing more praises of Jake Jill and Hall because we're fans. We're on board with Jake Jill and Hall. But it it begs the question in any movie that he's in, would and and you have to approach this with an open mind. Would Maggie Gyllenhaal do this role better? That's such a great Wait. question. <laughs> okay. Wow, this is not where I thought it was going to go. <laughs> I have to get this off my chest. I really want to see Jake and Maggie play a love interest. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is okay. the Jill and Hall of Fame. <laughs> okay. oh, we see it for pretend on Game of Thrones, so why not for real yeah. right. pretend? You know? <laughs> they like tastefully like censor them kissing with like objects in, yeah, this, in the right, frame. Exactly. Oh, Maybe they could be star-crossed lovers. I mean, who sure. knows? Yeah. 
<laughs> I, love it. Okay. I like that a lot. That's, that is not where I thought that was going. That's yeah. 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 <laughs> Gracefully <laughs> skirted the question, but made it more interesting. So yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'll do you one better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do I okay. tastefully approach incest? Yeah. 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 I'll take that <laughs> Well, okay. That opinion started because I think that Maggie Gyllenhaal would play me in a movie. And then I was like, wait, who would I want to play my love interest? Of course, Jake. Gotcha. Uh, that makes not, sense. You like, put yourself in a corner. <laughs> like, this, is, this is actually my, just my opinion now. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so good. Uh, okay, but what, sorry, what was the question? Would Maggie play Jake Gyllenhaal in Velvet Buzzsaw? Would, like, would she the role play that be character better, better? Or would the movie be better if Maggie Ooh. was in that? No. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. No. That's okay. it. That's Flat Jake's no. role all the that's, way. Yeah. That's an opinion. Okay. Appreciate mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Have you found a movie that like Maggie would be better in, or is there a movie that, or do you guys think she Matt would has be yet better? to find one that she wouldn't I've, be better in? I'm tr- I'm looking for the movie that she would not be better in. Yeah. Wow. Ambulance. I'm sorry. Ambulance erasure. <laughs> Listen, I also want Jake. It's Rachel Dawes. Like get him in the dark night. We, you know, we are like, Jake fans. <laughs> switch it both ways. Again, this is not throwing any shade at Jake and the roles that he's playing. He's great. We're we love him. I just don't know if Maggie doesn't maybe take it up a notch somewhere. Yeah. Okay. I really want you guys to watch Velvet Buzzsaw and please tell me. Okay. What if you would replace <laughs> we'll report him with back. Maggie? Yeah, yeah please, I, please. We have homework. Maggie Gyllenhaal has this like whimsy to her face and her voice that like I don't think I could hot swap her for Jake for every film. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, I still want to see the Donnie Darko. I just want them to swap. I want her to oh. be the lead and see what that. I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, yes. That would be cool. He could tell like her. Brokeback Mountain back. would be like less of a movie. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's a lot more straightforward there. Yeah, it's just kind of like okay. <laughs> unless, she, unless, unless she was still married to Anne Hathaway, then that would be juicy. Ooh, yeah, that would. Okay, be, yeah. yeah like or that. it's Jake. Jake is Heath Ledger. Yes. And Maggie. Ooh, now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Should we write this down? This is all. <laughs> Hollywood. Are you listening? <laughs> Well, I love that. Um, that segment is one of our favorites to do. It really helps us get a sense to know you a lot better. Uh, hopefully you've gotten to know us a little bit better. Um, and uh, yeah, we have actually had to skip that segment for the last few episodes, which is a bummer. So this was a very nice welcome back for us personally. So thanks for playing along. Um, you are now official members of the movie club. So welcome. Ooh, yeah. You're not, welcome. You're not Thank just you. like, you know, participating members. You are official. You've done it. You're in. Welcome. We'll get wow. the jackets Hell in the yeah. mail. So yeah, yeah. Just let us know. <laughs> as soon as we can find the intern, he's, he he yeah. ran away. We, just, we worked the poor guy to death. 